Hey guys, I tweeted out that I was going to film my practice session with Titleist and answer some of your questions, so uh, here we go. Jeremy asked, how do you hit a low 60 to 70 yard shot that will hit and check? What are your swing keys and ball position, etc., on that? Okay, this is actually perfect since this is exactly what I've been working on in the off season for a little bit. Um, couple key things that I, I've personally been paying attention to is I don't want to get too handsy with this shot because if I get a little too handsy with a little too much wrist cock, contact becomes a little harder because this is, I think of this as another variable that I have to worry about. So for me, I've been, you want, you want your hands ahead of the ball, ahead of the ball and ahead of the club. So I've actually been presetting that a little bit. This would be kind of the straight up and down what I've been doing, I've been presetting the hands ahead a little bit. And all I'm doing from here is just turn, turn. I'm letting my turn dictate the distance. Kind of looking like this. Kind of Steve Stricker-like. Um, and one of the key things with that is because I want this wrist angle to hold the entire time. I need to make sure my eyes follow the club the entire way. Because if I stay behind it, it the, the hands and arms kind of run out of room. It's much easier to keep that angle if I keep my head going. Like I said, I, I'm trying to get my turn to control the distance. I'm not feeling any of my hands. That should make for better contact and better contact equals, equals more spin. So Zidane asks, hitting different shots with the same club, regular fade, draw, low, high, be good to see how it affects your distances and how it opens up your shot options with each club. Okay, so that's, that's a lot, that's a lot. But I think for me, I used to work the ball a lot. I used to try and hit it low, high, draw, fade, but I realized that my normal five yard draw is the most consistent option for me. So I don't, I don't remember the last time I hit a fade from the fairway. I'll, I'll hit a fade if there's a tree in my way, if, I've, if I'm in trouble, but um, unless there's a really big issue, I'm not hitting a fade just because my draw is my most consistent shot that I'm most comfortable with and you know, in the long run, if my draw has a, you know, if I'm 15% closer to the hole every time, or in the grand scheme of things, you know, I'm not gonna hit a fade just because it's the right pin. I'm gonna hit my draw because that's the shot that's gonna, you know, get me closer to the hole. Um, but we can definitely see how it affects my distances. And when it comes to this, I'm only looking at carry. Uh, I can control carry and then from that point on it's, for, it's up to me to adjust. If the greens are firmer, I'll take it back. I'm, I'm not worried about the app, the you know, rollout per se. So if my stock number right now is 180, I'll hit, I'll hit, my, I'll hit a fade and I'll open up my stance open up the club face a little bit. And I with, with the fade, I really wanna get my body turned through to hold the club face a little more open. That was a pretty good fade. Maybe I should hit it more often. And that went 172, so you can, the fade will always go a little shorter than the draw. My favorite's the draw I've had, I've have the most control with it. I think it's partly because I grew up playing with it um, growing up. Um, a lot of guys have gone to the fades and more prefer the fade. Um, you know, I feel like I'm taking the torch from Zach Johnson. He, he, was the, he was the drawer for a while. Now, I mean, there's so many more faders now than there are drawers because, you know, it tends to be a little bit more accurate. Um, a fade is technically supposed to be a little bit more accurate than draw. But for me, it wasn't, so I stick to my draw most of the time. 
There are a couple different ways I mess around with hitting it low. One is I put the ball a little further back in my stance. So this is my normal uh, ball position with the seven iron to try and hit it low. I move it back a little bit, but also that pushes my swing path a little bit more inside. So I, to counteract that, I actually open up just a tiny bit. And with this, kind of like with the fade, I want to keep my hands ahead of the club a bit more. So I'm really firing my chest to make sure it stays ahead, like so. And that definitely went a little lower. And I went about 174, so a little shorter than my stock, which is expected. Um, I don't want to swing too hard at it because that'll increase the spin a little too much. And another way I've, to be, I think for me anyway, the best way I've done better when it, when it gets windy and I want to hit it lower, I just actually take another club and swing softer. Um, Whenever I've messed around with the ball position, sometimes my club face control isn't, just isn't as good and, and I'm much more comfortable taking extra club, taking the spin, that'll take the spin off of it. And um, I've seen better success hitting it that way. Um, so the next one I guess will be high. With this one, it's the opposite of the low. I don't wanna, I wanna make sure the, the lag I've created in the transition I'm trying to get rid of as much as possible. So a thing for me that I like to focus on when trying to hit it high is at impact, I want everything to be really, uh, my arms to be really wide, and that'll really help me release the club that way. And I, and I wanna stay really tall with it to give me that room to release it fully. Unless I wanna hit it really high, I don't feel like I need to hit, I need to move the ball position up too much. And that definitely went plenty high. And that actually went 180 yards because with the, ex, ex, with the full release, I'm getting a little bit more club head speed and the spin went, went up a little bit, but because of the extra club head speed, it got there just fine to my stock number. I basically ask how far my, my caddy thinks it's playing. You know, we'll say like it's, 165 to the front, it's 15 on, it's 180 yards, but we want to land it five short because the green is a little firm. So it's 175, there's a little bit of wind hurting off the left, let's say. And so it can, so you can still hit that 180 or if you want to hit, hit a lower one, you can hit it 175. Um, I tell my caddy, just tell me what you think the number is playing and I'll and I'll kind of see what I feel comfortable with. Because at the end of the day, I need to hit the shot that I am most comfortable with that will give me the most confidence and the ability to uh, pull off the shot. I do, it's different every, every player. So there are certain guys that the caddy will just tell them exactly every shot. This is a sawed off seven iron, hit it right at this target. Um, it's a bit more kind of a, he gives me the info and then I figure out, I kind of go from there. I'm trying to give you guys options as to why this is how I do it. You should try it out and it absolutely could not be for you and might not work, but you can just try and see if, see if it works. Tim Bennett asks, wedges, specifically flighted shots if possible, thanks. You know, wedges, yeah, wedges, you definitely don't want to get it too high. Um, you want the hands ahead of the club at impact and that'll provide much better contact, much better control, more spin, which is good. Um, anytime you get it, anytime you get the club ahead of the hands at impact, it basically means you have to hit behind it. The spin's gonna be all off. The, the distance control is gonna be all off. So for the flighted wedge, it's really similar to the, to like the 60, 70 yard shot with the lob or 56 that I was showing earlier. I preset my hands a little ahead. If I'm trying to definitely hit it low, I'm gonna move it back in my stance a little bit. And just like with the, all, the, all the other ones, I'm letting my turn dictate everything. I'm making sure this 
this angle, I kind of focus on this wrist angle, stays like this. I'm not adding or, you know, losing any of it. I'm keeping that angle all the way from, all the way from my backswing kind of through. And it's a feel, it's probably gonna change a little bit here and there, but that's gonna give me the best chance at making clean contact. So it's a little behind, a little more towards my right foot, hands ahead, and just focus on keeping that angle. And if you do it right, you'll probably have a little draw to it. It, pro it shouldn't fade. That is a pretty standard wet shot, um, especially on tour. You don't see guys ever trying to hit it too high. That is for sure. Um, you hit the ball solid enough, even if it goes a little lower, it's still gonna have plenty of spin to, to hold most, most greens and most pin locations. Um, unless you're from the rough, then, then things change. But from the fairway, you know, we're looking for distance control and solid contact. Um, and that, that is the best way to do it for sure. Alan wants to know about my pre-shot routine. So my, my pre-shot routine has changed a decent bit over the years. Um, I've had times when it was pretty strict. I wanted to be, I wanted these exactly five steps. Um, but then um, I realized that if any of those five steps I did wrong or it was interrupted by something else, it really, it really interrupted my rhythm. And the more you get super detailed about your pre-shot routine, um, the, actually the higher the chance that it's gonna be interrupted in, in some way, shape or form. So I think um, it, you, I have a general idea of what I wanna do in my pre-shot routine, um, but it's not extremely detailed. Um, one of the things that I really want to focus on is on a, especially on a windy day, you get gusts here and there. And, you know, you're not sure if it's like a 165 shot or 170 shot or maybe even 175 shot. I think key for me is, and for really any, any golfer really is to really make up your mind exactly what shot you want to hit before you step up to it. Even I, you know, oftentimes, even as I'm walking into it, I'll be thinking, all right, is it 165 or is it 170? Because, you know, wind, wind is constantly changing, uh, but you can't let that distract you too much because at the end of the day, even if it's playing 165, if you hit a committed 170 shot, that'll, be, that'll turn out way better than a uncommitted 65 or 70, like a 65 shot. Even if you guess correctly, a committed swing is often a much better, much better, um, result. This is what I used to do. Okay, back here, I'm going to make, you know, two swings with, with my swing thoughts. So my swing thoughts are usually uh, feeling like I have a little pause at the top and letting my head go, for example. So I'll make one swing with like the pause and then the through and then another swing with the pause and through and then I'll be back and then I'll make sure, okay, I want to stay present. So I'm going to do a couple breaths. So I'll do a couple breaths and then I'll try and visualize the, um, the exact shot I want to hit. And so I want this shot to start right at the target and draw a little back to the pin. I'm gonna pick out a point, um, an aiming point, maybe a couple feet in front of my ball, which is that piece of grass right there for this one. Go to it. I want the club ahead first. Get my aiming point, look at the target, set up. And it's all these like, really getting every try and get every detail but like i said um the you don't want to get too detailed like for example like what if what if i kind of end up setting up with my feet first and then target you know like oh no like i screwed up this isn't exactly what i planned out and so you know interruptions happened happen you know you might get a massive gust so you have to change clubs and then you have to start the whole process over again I don't, I don't think it's too beneficial to get super detailed um, and stuff like pre-shot routine is pretty personal. You, you want to kind of find your own pre-shot routine. You can definitely take hints from me and every other pro, but um, you know, mess around with, with different things and, and see what works for you. So 
taught us how to hit a, a fairway chip shot because he's been blading a few. Um, you know, the most important thing is the hand has to be ahead of the club. It can't be this, but it definitely can't be that. Once that happens, um, the bounce gets too exposed. You're gonna have to hit really far behind it. Um, and the key is, the key is to have it a little ahead. And the easiest way to do it, I think, is to just hold this wrist angle and make a kind of a turn turn instead of a, a wrist because from here it's gonna be really hard to get it back to that nice little wrist angle. And a quick drill that I use all the time to warm up and that you guys can use is to do it with one hand. You're gonna preset it a little bit, hands ahead. You're gonna put your um, ball almost on your right foot, keep the weight ahead, feet pretty close together. And all I'm thinking is on, as if the club is attached to my chest, I'm just making this motion. I'm not letting my hands do this. And the reason I do it one-handed is the club is just really heavy one-handed, at least for me anyway. So it, I, it's really hard for me, once I get it here, it's really hard to get it back. And so I'm just gonna let the club do its thing, keep my weight, weight 90% on my left foot. You can even go like so to make sure you get that inside path a little bit, which is good for keeping it shallow. It's for low point control for me, personally. The more angles I create, the harder it is to get the exact low point. Clean contact is the, is the most important thing for me um, and getting consistent contact. Um, and I just find it easier when I don't change my wrist angles too much. When, when you have to hit it really high, then you, know, then you might want a little extra stuff to get it up in the air. Coach G asks, can I get the one hop stop chip? I think though, you know, hitting the one hop stop chip, the most important thing is to judge the lie and make sure you have a good enough lie to do so. So once you've figured out that the lie is good enough, you want a pretty steep angle of attack. So you're gonna want the ball back and you're gonna want a, lot, a decent amount of loft, so I'm gonna open up a little bit. I'm going to have my hands a little ahead, but not a whole lot. And really the, the most important thing is just super solid contact with, with a little bit of steepness. That'll create the most friction. And so for that, I don't want my head coming up and down. I'm gonna try to keep my head real high I keep my hands a little ahead. And really, I'm just really worried, I'm just worried about super solid contact. And ideally, you want it a little bit on the toe. That's gonna provide a little more spin. That is how you hit the one hop stop. One of the first things I do when I come out to a new golf course every week is I go to the short game area like we do here. Um, I check out the rough, how long it is and how thick it is. And the first thing I really wanna do is, is kind of try out different techniques. Um, and whether my kind of my standard, my normal technique is good or do I need to incorporate a slightly different technique to get the result that I want. And what I mean by that is my standard technique kind of like with my wedge shots, I don't want too much wrist hinge. Um, if I, it's just another variable for me. And the wrist hinge in a chipping is good because you get a little steeper and you can hit kind of hit it higher at times, but it's sometimes not great for distance control. So I'll see. So my normal technique out of a rough like this, um, I'll preset it a little ahead and I'll just kind of keep that angle kind of throughout. I don't want my hands doing too much. Shot. 
if it's super thick like so and I see a lot of that sometimes the sometimes the the no wrist hinge I I just have to hit it really hard because I'm just I, I'm not getting enough speed into it so at that point I'll mess a bit more with the wrist hinge and I'm thinking I'm gonna hinge it and I'm also gonna release it through and that should that extra little hit with the wrist should give me enough speed to get through it a little better and so I'm kind of messing around when do I need when do I need more wrist hinge when do I not if it's a decent lie like this I definitely don't want any wrist hinge I don't need it I can get away with just my normal standard shot and it'll come out fine I think one of the most important things for your short game is judging the lie. And, you know, I have a pretty good idea of how the grass is going to react with the club just because I've done this for a long time. But I think one of the best ways you can do is use your practice swing. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'll see, see the lie that the ball is on and I'm going to make my practice swings exactly where I think it's the similar type of grass. So we've got this kind of weird little um, root-like grass. So if this is a tournament, I'm not going to take my practice rings in this normal Bermuda. I'm gonna take my practice rings kind of in this other grass of the same stuff, hopefully in kind of the same grain. I'm thinking this is about the same, so I'm, I'm in my practice ring, I'm trying to feel how the club's going through. Is it going through easy? Is it going through hard? You know, I'm not going to take a practice swing in the different Bermuda grass because that's not a good indicator of, of how the how this grass is going to react. So I <laughs> sometimes I'll be looking around different places. All right, all right so this one is kind of similar. I'll take a couple practice swings. I'll feel okay that's that feels a little thick and how am I going to and so if it's a little thick I'm going to swing a little harder than I normally would and hit my shot but I think that's I think that's the best way to kind of assess the lie that you have you guys thanks for following along my practice session at Triners here today hopefully I was able to give you guys some tips to help your game and uh, look forward to do this again in the near future.